Well, having completed this work, I began to think about where did speech come from? I have a, a model for how speech evolved into math, writing, science, computing, and the internet, but where does science come from? So then I began to study the origin of speech, and I read a book uh, by Merlin Donald called The Making of the Modern Mind, in which he talked about how the complexity of our hominid ancestors, hominid means uh, homo uh, habilis, homo erectus, homo ne neanderthalus, our ancestors that were part of our genus homo, but were not yet humans, not homo sapiens. And the first, uh, our first ancestors uh, came out of the trees in Africa, landed on the ground, they stood up erect, they had their hands available, but they no longer had the protection of the trees, and so they began to pick up rocks, stones, to use as tools to defend themselves. And pretty soon, they began to shape these rocks that they picked up, and they started to make tools. And the next thing that happened was, as they began to, to use their manual dexterity to make tools, they learned how to control fire. And when they controlled fire, they started to live in larger groups. Instead of living in just uh, the father, the mother, and the children, they formed larger families. They lived in it with, a, with a clan or a tribe uh, around the fire because they had to keep the fire going. And so social cooperation developed among them, and they participated in large-scale hunting and large-scale food gathering. They began to share their food with each other. And they developed a system of communication which uh, Merlin Donald called mimetic communication. Let me explain what mimetic communication is. It consists of hand signals. It consists of facial gestures, it consists of body language, and it consists of nonverbal vocalizations like mm and oh and ah. This form of communication is not abstract. You cannot communicate ideas with it, but you can communicate your intentionality. And Merlin Donald claimed that mimetic communication was a co cognitive laboratory, the place where we developed the ways of coming up with speech. And he also noted that, as you can see, I make use of mimetic communication combined with the words that come out of my mouth so that our spoken language is a combination of verbal language, that is language based on words, but it also entails the use of hand signals, my facial gestures, my body language, and my vocalization. If I talked in a strict monotone, as I am now trying to do, I would soon put you to sleep. What I do when I express myself is I raise the pitch, I lower the pitch, in order to make my speech more interesting. OK, so here comes my idea now. My idea was that the reason that speech emerged was that the complexity of hominid life became so great that the, the, you, the hominid mind could no longer, or the hominid brain, could no longer cope with the complexity of, uh, of a life in which you had to make tools, you had to build fire, you had to keep the fire going, you had to get along with your relatives, you had to share your food. Uh, it became too much to uh, deal with, and what was needed were concepts. And the first concepts were our first words. So let's take the word water. Water represents all of our perceptions of water. The water we drink, the water we cook with, the water that we wash with, the water that we swim in, rain, water that comes from snow melting. All of these percepts of water are all united with the concept or the word water. So now, uh, all of a sudden, the human brain becomes able to think abstractly, able to plan, able to talk about things that are not here. So 
There's no book in front of me right now, but I could begin to talking to you about books, the books that I've written, because I have a word, book, to describe those objects. And as soon as I say the word books, I don't have to show a book in front of you. As soon as I use the word book, you know what I'm talking about. So words allowed uh, us to deal with things that are not here in space or in time. And this, are, this is absolutely essential for planning. And once hominids had the ability to plan, they no longer were hominids, they became human beings. So with language, we had the ability to plan, to think abstractly, to communicate abstract ideas. And this is why I believe language is such a, an important part of what makes us human. And understanding the origin of language, I think, is to understand the origin of human beings.